I used to like the mocha a lot, but back in 2018, President Trump's White House physician administered the test to him, and this garnered national attention. While I'm glad this sparked an interest in dementia screening tools, this had the side effect of introducing the mocha to people who shouldn't be administering them in the first place. Apparently the mocha's creators started to receive threats of lawsuits from people who were punished for doing poorly on the mocha. A man was allegedly institutionalized in a nursing home. A nurse reportedly lost her job, all because the test was being misused. The creator responded by saying that only providers who complete a $125 certification course should be allowed to administer mochas. Now, this is just my opinion, but I don't like this move. People misuse tools all the time, but just because people eat Tide Paws doesn't mean that I need a certification to do laundry. There's been a lot of goodwill built up around the mocha in the medical community, in part because it was a free tool, and setting up a paywall erodes that goodwill. I mean. You're watching this on YouTube, right? You don't need to pay or even register to do so. YouTube could charge money for its services. It's not a public service. But I think you'd agree that most of the viewers would probably leave in an instant. And the only real tangible benefit would be that the comment section would probably improve. Which is... Uh, hashtag YouTube Premium. The Mocha is available in tons of different languages, which is always a plus. There are also different versions available. The idea is that if you administer these to a patient without dementia, that patient will start to learn the exam. So if you have an exam with similar questions but different content, you can still administer the test. See, I'm a geriatrician, right? I've been administering this particular mocha for years, so I'm very familiar with it. So if you wanted to test me for dementia, it wouldn't make sense for you to use this one, so you'd probably use one of these. Well, maybe you'd want to do a fast scale on me, cause um, yeah, I, I don't know how to do any of these. The MOCA is one of the longer and harder dementia screening tests. Again, sometimes you want a difficult test with high sensitivity, but sometimes it's just too hard for some patients. Each section is labeled with a cognitive domain, which is kinda nice if you're using a formal definition of dementia. This first connect the dots style test is called the trails test. There's a longer version of the trails test that's supposedly correlated with driving ability. The junk thing about this is that I never know how to explain how to do this to my patients. <sighs> if only there were some kind of training course that explained how to administer mochas. Next we have copy the three-dimensional object, in this case copy the cube. If you've had practice in geometry during your education, I imagine that you'll do better at these tests. As a side note, I don't like this version's description of this task. That is not a rectangle. The mocha has my favorite clock draw. Unlike the mini cog in the slums, they don't provide you with a circle, and there's plenty of space to put a clock. The time of the clock is similar to that of the mini cog. The animals. This is another example of cultural biases in tests. So I'd say that most people who have grown up in America and have visited a zoo can name these, but I've definitely had a man tell me that this is a pig. and. Yeah, you know, I can kind of see that. He asked me what it really was, and I told him that it was a rhinoceros. Rhinoceros, he exclaimed. Is that some kind of dinosaur? Five item recall. Again, this is significantly harder than three item recall. And I'm not sure why, but I think that this particular five item recall is harder than the others. I don't say velvet or daisy on a regular basis. Attention. If your patient has difficulty hearing, good luck. Also, I hope that you guys have learned how to subtract after watching my MMSE video. Language section. I can't get anyone to repeat this first sentence. John, you are not helping. And really? Words that begin with the letter F? <sighs> Somehow all my patients know one word that begins with F and ends in U C. Abstractions are kind of fun. No points for lazy answers. If the patient says they're both words, well, that's technically correct, but that's not good enough. It's kind of like when I ask a girl on a date and she says, no, we have nothing in common. And I said, what about breakfast to Tiffany's? Here's the part of the exam at which you score the five item recall. Notice that you're given an optional section in which you can give hints, but the patient doesn't get any points for that. So what's the point? Well. Neurologists sometimes categorize dementias as cortical and subcortical. 
So let's say that you can't remember the word face right off the bat, but you can recall it if you were told that the first word was a body part. That means that a memory formed somewhere, but you had difficulty retrieving it. This suggests that the plumbing, or the subcortical area of your brain, is affected. In contrast, let's say that you have Alzheimer's dementia. No matter how many hints you receive, you won't be able to recall the word because a memory never formed in your cerebral cortex in the first place, and thus you have a cortical dementia. Six points for orientation. Again, technically there's no right or wrong answer as far as how many orientation questions you should pack into a test. As is the case in the slums, the MOCA takes your educational level into account. So that's why Dr. Okamoto always starts me off with 25 extra points.